I'm Robert Scoble and we're at the Stanford University School of Engineering and we're getting a look at self-driving cars, solar cars, and cars that can outrace most every race car driver. <laughs> So who are you? I'm Sven Beiker. I'm the executive director of the Center for Automotive Research here at Stanford University. So what is the future of the automobile? So we are not necessarily looking at powertrain, tires, brakes, and so on. We're really looking at autonomous vehicles, connected vehicles, to some extent also electric vehicles. So all these things that are happening, obviously, at the moment, more or less emerging. And we are trying to find the answer, okay, where's the idea of individual mobility really going with all of this? And now basically this got on a different level, if you will, to really get these systems ready for, for public deployment. And it basically shows that there's a very, very long to go, way to go. For instance, you can have these things in a close course, professional drivers or non-drivers, right? But if you really want to have this in your neighborhood streets, completely different story. So you really want to make sure that the sensors work, that the algorithms work and so on. And this is what's happening here. Actually, we will look at these vehicles a little bit later, uh, where you really make sure that actually a vehicle can distinguish between a trash can and a child, which sounds a little bit funny to make this uh, comparison, but if you look at the size and, and um, extensions of these objects, it's about the same thing. So that's one thing. And the other thing really is um, what we saw with the DARPA challenges, that was really great from an autonomous driving standpoint, um, vision and, and perception, all these things. But there was not really that much knowledge of vehicle dynamics, so really how do vehicles behave. Would have been very interesting to have the same setup just on icy roads and see if the same system could still handle the vehicle. And this is what we are res researching here a lot. So actually what happens if you get to the limits of adhesion, limits of friction, limits of handling? And we also have another group researching this, which is very exciting. What are we standing in front of? Right. So the major experiment that we're having here is really, again, autonomous driving, two different fields, and you will see the two different fields a little bit later on. We are researching a lot driver-vehicle interaction. We haven't really set this up today, but there's research going on in driving simulators and so on. And obviously we ha have a very interesting group researching highly efficient vehicles. We'll look at this later. Now in front of this vehicle, this is basic research that came out of the drive-by-wire uh, corner, if you will. So there was a lot of research in this field already in the 1990s, and this is still carrying over, obviously, to, to present day. And this is the connection or the intersection, if you will, of um, um, vehicle dynamics control and autonomous driving. And I would think that Mick actually can tell you much more about this, sure. who's one of the PhD students in Chris Gerdes' Dynamic Design Lab. Very cool. Hey, Mick. Hey, welcome. welcome. Um, so who are you, first of all? Um, my name is Grisada Mick Kritiakirana. I'm a third year PhD, or fourth year PhD student in mechanical engineering. Yeah. So, yeah. And most people, I have a brand new Toyota Prius. Most people don't realize that there's no mechanical linkage between the steering wheel and the, we and the wheels that are driving the car, right? It's fly by wire. And right. are you taking that to the next step? Is that what you're doing with this car? So we built this vehicle to be like, by wire so it's like very flexible so we could actually do autonomous drive on this car if you want or we could actually have some human inputs like the steer by wire and the throttle and then we could see like um, what kind of driver assistance we could help um, driver to make the car safer. And let me just add one thing. So there's no production vehicle today that does not have a mechanical linkage between the steering the wheel yeah. and their the wheel. Uh, really this, this is true for, for the throttle. So throttle accelerator and the throttle in the, in the engine, actually there's, with many cars, no mechanical link anymore. But steering and brakes are still mechanic. So really? I can assure you that. Okay. But it is changing. So we're adding more and more electronics to, to these systems. So at the moment, we have a companionship, if you will, of mechanics and electronics. What are you trying to learn from doing the research with this car? Are you trying to understand the dynamics of the car, how it w would go through a slide, for instance, or what would happen on ice versus asphalt, dry asphalt? So for this one, we try to like do more research on vehicle dynamics side of the vehicle. So there's two main themes that going on with this test vehicle. One is the full autonomous um, racing and rallying. And we try to understand how do we control a vehicle autonomously on the loose surface, like on the dirt surface. And the other side of the research that we do on P1 is basically a driver assistant system and basically kind of like develop the next, um, the future of um, vehicle safety system, like the driver assistant system. Yeah, 
we, we've seen that in high-end cars that uh, we now have traction control, right? So right. if we're going into a slide around a turn, the, the car starts braking for us and starts right. uh, controlling our behavior or helping our behavior, right? Because we're about to get in a wreck and it assists us, right? Yes, that's correct. So we kind of look in terms of like, so in addition to the brake, what happened? What about steering? What can you do with your steering? And that's what, why we have the steer by wire system in terms of like, you could read the driver inputs, and but the actual um, wheels that turning could be whatever we control. So we, we try to understand what's the driver commands and try to provide what is the correct steering that will make the car stable without losing control. Do you, so do you actually uh, hire professional race car drivers to take this out on a track and say, you know, drive it as best as you can, as fast as you can. We're going to study y your behavior and then and then try to improve on that. Um, for this car, mainly it's like um, we are like the driver. Okay. So, <laughs> so you but get to be the race car driver. <laughs> yes. So we could pretend to be a race car driver. But um, there's also another research that we're working on, um, autonomous Audi TTS, and that one we actually had a um, professional driver drive the car and took some data. And um, I think there's more future yep. projects coming on that Sounds kind like of it. like mm -hmm. investigate how the race car driver behave. Tell, tell me about the technology in this car. What, what, what is different about this car than my Toyota Prius, for instance? Um, so first of all, everything is like fully by wire. So basically, we could we could control everything. We could control steering, and we con could control the throttle and brake of this. Um, um, we don't have full control over the hydraulic brake system, but we have um, the vehicle is drive by electric motors, so we could control the regenerative brake on the vehicle. So that's one different things. And the other things that we have on this car is, is fully equipped with all the sensors measurements. So we could measure all the um, acceleration in X, Y, Z, in three axis, same as the gyros, like the, um, the angular um, acceleration and rates. And also we have the GPS system that you could see the little three mushroom on the, on the top. And that's basically um, give us the ver very accurate velocity and position. And we have some kind of like um, base station system. So we have DGPS, which we could get position accuracy in the level of two centimeters. So I didn't realize uh, GPS was that, that accurate. Uh, so th is this using the military grade a um, GPS? Um, so to do that, we actually have to set up uh, a base station. So when we go testing, we have a little another portable um, little tripods that set up the GPS up. And basically, that GPS system. Um, we say that it stands still, it's fixed right here. So anything that's read that it thinks move around is all errors. So what happened is it read the errors and send the correction back to the vehicle. So by doing that technique, you have like a two centimeters accuracy level. How, how much uh, software code is being written for these cars now? I, certainly we're gonna talk more about that on the autonomous car, but right. I have a feeling that <laughs> Do, doing research in today's world isn't so much about the motor or about the steering. It's a lot about software, isn't it? Um, there's a um, reasonable amount of software that's going in, but um, from our research side, we kind of like more focus on the vehicle dynamics, and it's kind of like boiled down to equation of motion. And surprisingly, when you get the concepts working right, generally it's just down to like um, proper five or six lines that's like of equations. And then, so it's not like... Um, it's not like thousand lines of codes or things like that, but that's kind of different when you look at the, the other side of the project, which they're doing like the junior research, which is more like decision making, then that's like more on the, on the software side. Um, how much data does this car collect as it drives down the road? Um, a lot, <laughs> <laughs> too much to look at, so. How, how much, uh, can this car drive better than a human? Can it race faster than a, you know, if we built a car on NASCAR and took the driver out of it, could you make the car win? It depends on which human you choose, <laughs> so. <laughs> so I think currently today, um, we are not at the um, stage where we could be the top race car driver yet, but I think we are pretty much on the level that we could beat um, the average driver, so. What's the coolest thing in the car? If you were showing another geek who m maybe doesn't work in cars, but what, what would you be bragging about? Um, probably just say this car could just race by itself. <laughs> and it's probably better than you, I think. <laughs> I'm it's better than me. <laughs> Rocky, he's seen me drive already. <laughs> 
So, so what's the next part of the lab we're going to get well, to? The next project we should be looking at Junior, which is um, a sister vehicle of the one that competed in the 2007 Urban Challenge. And this is, if you will, the uh, computer science part of the autonomous driving research here at Stanford. Whereas this vehicle, again, doesn't really have a concept of obstacles in its way and so on. It's really looking a lot at vehicle dynamics. So the other part we are going to look at is, is really um, computer vision, uh, decision making, uh, probabilistic planning and all these things. Yeah.